Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome again to At The Master's Feet. Praise God. It's so good to be with you once again. Hallelujah. On this Tuesday night or this Sunday morning, blessing God for his goodness to us all. Amen. Listen, we continue today in the message that we started a couple of weeks ago entitled The Doorpost Mood. There's a blessing in store for you. Whatever, remember we said, whatever it is that has held you bound this is your day of freedom. You are no longer a slave, but you are a son. Take a listen, and I'm going to see you right after the broadcast. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You have hope. If you're still breathing, hallelujah. The God of all peace, the God of all hope, he's for you today. Can we praise God for that? Hallelujah. And I know sometimes we may settle in and we sometimes may convince ourselves that things will never change. Things will never get any better. This is my lot in life. You know, I'm not destined to have more. I'm not destined for the more abundant life. You know, it's just not meant for me. You know, I guess I'll just settle with being the tail and not the head. I'll just settle with, oh, it's okay to be beneath and not above. I know what y'all quote in the scripture, but you know what? Being in my mouth master's house is not so bad. That's all right if you're a slave, but you're not a slave. That's slave talk. Hallelujah. Slaves say master. Master. I, you ain't got no master. You have a master. Hallelujah. You have a savior. Glory to God. Now, that would be okay if you were a slave, but you're not a slave. You're a son. Somebody say, I'm a son. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm claiming my sonship today. I'm going to walk as a son. I'm going to talk as a son. I'm going to possess as a son. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. My angels are going before me. Hallelujah. They're going to make my way prosperous. Thank you, Lord God. Glory. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Our souls say yes to your word today, Lord God. The doorpost is shifting. I, I, I feel it moving. Woo, glory. The doorpost is moving. It's moving. It's moving. Thank you, Lord God. Those old structures are being torn down. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Remember what we read in Luke 15 about the prodigal son and how he decided, I no longer want to be in my father's house. Ooh, teenagers, I remember how, ooh, when I get grown. We all did it. I did it. Ooh, when I get back, oh, when, when I move out of here. Ooh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. To all them bills start coming regularly. <laughs> Not just uh, quarterly, but monthly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But you know what? That's a, that's a place in young people's life. And actually... Let me say this, when you raise your children right, they are supposed to want to leave home. Just in its timing, not before time, in its timing, amen? And you will know when it's time. Can you support yourself on your own? Can you do what you need to do for yourself? Can you think like an adult? Do you have the wisdom that will carry you through life? If not, stay yourself at the house, amen? Because nine times out of ten, that's where you'll end up back anyway. But he thought being in his father's house was, yeah, I want what belongs to me. Yeah. Give me my possession. Give me my inheritance. Divide it up now. I need to be out of here. These rules, all these things that you got going on, it's just too much. I cannot handle it any longer. The father did not argue. He divided the inheritance, gave to both sons. The younger son took his journey. You all know how the story goes. But there came a point in time when life hit, because life will hit. Life is just going to hit, amen? Life is just going to come. And he connected himself with moochers. Those who say they want to be your friend, but they really don't want to be your friend. They just want well, all you, what you got. Whatever it is you can do for me, whatever it is you can give me at this time, amen? And then when it run, runs out, you know what? I ain't like you no way. You don't help me spend all my money. You don't like me anyway? Okay, fine. Okay, what are you going to do? You broke in a far land, in a distant land. 
So here's what he does. He turns himself over as a slave to go and feed the pigs for someone else. But the Bible says when he came to himself, he realized being in my daddy's house wasn't so bad. <laughs> now the master house sucks. <laughs> Amen. This is not what I signed up for. Amen. My father has riches. He got riches right now. I'm in a hog pen, but he got riches. This is not adding up. I'm talking to somebody now. You're somewhere in your life, in your stage of life, and what you're dealing with is not adding up. And your daddy has everything. Your daddy owns everything. He's got freedom, peace, and joy. Because these are things money can't buy you. Hallelujah. You may have the money, but you can't sleep at night. You may have the money, hallelujah, but you're in this discord this, this with your family. You may have the riches, but you're sick in your body. There are some things money cannot buy. Hallelujah. But I feel the doorpost moving on your behalf today. All you got to do is wake up. All you got to do is come to yourself. And you know what? I need to get back into my daddy's house. I need to get myself back into the good graces of God. I need to repent, turn from where I am, and get where I know there is safety. Somebody praise God for that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Let me tell you something. This is the time that we are in. This boy went home. He said, I've sinned against my father. Father, I've sinned against you. I've sinned against heaven. I'm not fit to be anything but a hired slave. He said, not today. You're a son. You're a son. You don't get to be a slave in my house. I don't care what you have done. I don't care what mistake you have made. You're still a son. You need to understand. Hallelujah. It's by, whatever you did is behind the blood. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I even haven't even gotten to that in my message, but I'm going to tell you right now. It's behind the blood. Thank you, Jesus. It's behind the blood. It's behind the blood. You need to understand Jesus put his ear to the doorpost one day when he hung on the cross and shed his blood so that we might be free. Glory. Hallelujah. Come to yourself. Get back in your father's house. Back under the father's graces. Hallelujah. You know what? Being in mom and daddy's house is not that bad. I get to eat free. My child told me one day, you know what? I really don't have it that bad. You know, I don't pay no bills. I get to eat what I want. I get to go down. You know, I'm saying you're not doing anything. She said, yeah, you know what? That's really not that bad. I said, you're right. It's not. But let me tell you something, there's something, there's nothing like being in the Father's care. It's not that, there's freedom in the Father's house. Hallelujah. And once you're free and not bound, bondage brings along other miseries. When you are bound, it brings worries. It brings doubts. It brings things into your life, disarray in your life. Because why? You're not able to move free. You're not free to do the things that God has called you to do. So that puts you in a place of bondage. Now listen at this. Let's move on with this. You don't have to make a deal with the devil. Amen. Remember what we said, Joseph said last week? Take these clothes, but you can't have me because I'm not your slave. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, I'm not your slave. We're not bowing today. Nehemiah said, I'm not hungry. Mm -mm. You're not my slave stomach. Mm -mm. God told me to fast, so I'm going to fast. Amen? Now, remember this. Let me read this before we go a little further into this. Galatians 4 says, formerly, when you did not know God, you were slaves to those who by nature are not God, slaves to your flesh, slaves to those members within you. Amen. But now that you know God or rather are known by God. So it's not so much that I know God is that God now knows me. Amen. How is it that you are turning back to those weak and miserable forces? Do you wish to be enslaved by them all over again? Yeah, Pastor, but it's pleasurable. We're having fun. It's only pleasurable for a season. Let me tell you something, sooner or later, you got to pay up. You got to pay the piper. The wages of sin is that there is a price tag to everything that we do. Amen? Amen? Believe me, there is. Hallelujah. Galatians 5 says this, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery, whom the Son sets free is what? 
he free indeed. Now, Isaiah 6, we read this, and we read how Isaiah is having this open vision. And the first thing we see, we're going to move on into this because we want to now deal with another portion of this message. Isaiah had an open vision, and the things that he saw, I believe, is going to help us get free, and it's going to help us also stay free. Amen. The first thing we read is that he saw the Lord. He saw him sitting up on a throne. He was high. He was lifted up. We've got to always envision him as God of the entire universe. Amen. That he is enthroned in the heavens, but he takes pleasure in indwelling among his people. you got to always remember, I have to always remember that he reigns supreme, that he is Elohim. He is maker and creator of everything and everyone. Nothing exists without the approval and permission of the Father. Amen? So you got to understand, he's lifted up above every circumstance, above every problem, sickness, everything. Jehovah Rapha is lifted high above sickness and diseases. He's lifted high above poverty. He's lifted high above anything. Hallelujah. That tries to lift itself above you. So we've got to always see our God. We cannot reduce try. You can't do this, but don't ever try to bring him to our level. Don't ever try to bring him into the place where, well, we're having this argument. God, you come on down here. No, 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 no. I have to stay in my place of judgment. I have to stay in my place so I can talk to you about what you need to do. Amen. I will never reduce myself to come down to your way of thinking. My thoughts are higher than yours. My ways are higher than yours. But remember, we now have a seat in the heavenly places with him. We just got to learn how to think like he thinks. Amen. So the first thing he did was he saw the Lord. Now the second thing we see he talks about is the seraphims. They are the fiery ones. They are the gardens of the guardians of the throne of God. Seraphims are the highest ranking celestial beings in the hierarchy of angels. They stood above this exalted throne and they cried one to another, holy Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. When they cried, this is what happened. The doorpost moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. And the message it says, the foundations trembled at the sound of the angel voices, and the whole house was filled with smoke. At the sound of the angel's voices, the doorpost moved. So now we want to talk about, now this is, this is part two. Yes, there will be part three, praise the Lord. Now we want to talk about the importance of angelic activity and putting our angels to work for us. Amen. We have got to move into this because this is why they have been sent. Angels remind us also that God is near and that he is working on our behalf and we all have them. Amen. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. When is the last time you gave your angel assignment? Because I have to ask myself, when is the last time you gave yours one? Amen. That's why we have them. My children are at school. Go to where they are. You encamp around them. You keep them safe. You protect them. You just, whatever it is that's needed at the time, amen? Now listen to what the scripture says in Psalms 103 and 20. We got to bear this out just a little bit. It says, bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. What do they hearken to? The voice of his word. Who gives his word voice? We do. Amen. Psalms 34 says, The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Hebrews 1 and 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? So let's take a look at a couple of stories, amen, that bear out how God's angels get involved with God's service to his people to bring about his plan. Let's first look at Acts chapter 10. And this is the story, very familiar story. This is the story of Cornelius, amen? Now, there was a man at Caesarea named Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian cohort, a devout man, one who feared God 
with all his household, gave many alms to the Jewish people and prayed to God continually. About the ninth hour of the day, he clearly saw in a vision an angel of God who had just come in and said to him, Cornelius, and fixing his gaze on him and being much alarmed, he said, what is it, Lord? And he said to him, your prayers, your arms has ascended as a memorial before God. Now dispatch men to Joppa, send for a man named Simon, who is also called Peter. A divine intervention, angelic activity, amen. His angel, God has sent his angel to give Cornelius instructions on what he must do for his divine purpose in life. Now, while Cornelius has had the, had the vision, now God is dealing with Peter while he is fasting on the rooftop. And we all know how this story goes. He's on the rooftop. God begins to let down sheets with all types of four-footed beast, beast and creeping things. And Peter says, and, and God tells Peter, arise, Peter, slay and eat. You know, he says, I have never touched anything common or unclean. Amen. So now we want to pick it up where the men have now gotten to Peter's house. So in verse 17, it says, now while Peter wondered within himself, because what God told him, don't call anything that I've made common, don't call it unclean. Amen. So now he wondered within himself what this vision which he had seen meant. So in verse 19, it says, while Peter thought about the vision, the spirit said to him, behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, go down, go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. So Peter goes the next day. He takes some of the other men with him. They go to Cornelius' house. So now this is what happened. Peter comes in, and he asks them, why have you sent for me? And this is what Cornelius said. He said, four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. At the ninth hour, I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayers have been heard. Your arms are remembered in the sight of God. He told, then he said, I was to send for you. And then Peter opened his mouth. Now he tells him what has happened. He tells him he has this vision. The angel has shown up and he has followed the angel's instruction. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality, that it, but in every, every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. Then Peter opens his mouth and he begins to preach Jesus to this household because Cornelius has gone. He's gathered his relatives. He's called his friends together because he doesn't know what's getting ready to happen. He's following the instructions of an angel. He's just following the instruction of the being. What if he had it ignored? Let me tell you what happened to him. Well, he wasn't going to be the first, amen. But because of this, he is the first Gentile that received salvation and the baptism, amen. So let's follow it out just a little bit further, amen. And Peter begins to preach. While he was speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon those who heard the word, and they were marveling that God had now poured his spirit upon the Gentiles. Angelic activity, y'all. This man's prayers and givings released his angel. Now, this story is going to teach us something. This story teaches us that it's not enough to just be good and do good. But I'm a good person. It's not enough to just be good and do good. It's not enough to just know God. It's not enough to just pray to him and you haven't accepted Jesus as your Savior. Now, this is not Cornelius' fault because the gospel had not been preached. But where I'm going with this is that if Cornelius had not believed his heavenly messenger, if his heavenly messenger had not been sent, Cornelius' household and his friends would not have received Jesus Christ, would not have received the infilling of, the, of Jesus, and would not have known him when they left this earth. God ensured, because he was a devout man, he was a good-hearted man. He was praying to God. He was talking to God. He was fasting. God made sure, this man loves me. I'm going to make sure he gets saved. I'm going to send my angel. And my angel is going to impress. I need to 
tell that to somebody that's believing your unsaved loved one not get going not gonna get saved. Let me tell you, they got angels too. You need to begin to release those angels and say, go and press in the mind of my grandson. Go and press in the mind of my sister or my brother. Go and press in their mind. Y'all need to go to church today. Go and press in their mind. Go minister to their heart because let me tell you, that's exactly what the angels will do. Their salvation will come, hallelujah, if you release their angels to turn their hearts, put them on the right path to lead them to the person that will preach Jesus to them. And y'all, look, don't preach ideas today. Don't preach your own theology. Just preach Jesus. Peter didn't come there with anything. Well, you know, I didn't think y'all was going to ever come in. I didn't think that. No, he preached Jesus. I know God is moving. I'm going to preach Jesus to these people. Hallelujah. So you need to release your angels. Release the angels to your unsaved loved ones. They're coming out. Glory to God. Release them on your family members. Somebody might say, I need to call grandma today. I don't know why. Every time I call her, you know, she's singing them old Negro spirituals and talking about the Lord. But guess what? I'm going to go on calling. Whatever she got to say, I'm going to hear. Because that's their timing. Their angels have orchestrated something on their behalf. They will talk to them in their sleep. They will visit. Release your angels. Release their angels and tell them, bring my unsaved loved ones in, in Jesus' name. Can we praise God for that? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Remember, Hebrew, give your angels an assignment. Remember, Hebrews 1 said they're all ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation. Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk about, we'll pick up on uh, the rest of this later, but I want to, let me talk about this last one, and that's when Peter, you all remember when Peter was in jail? Peter was in jail, and they had arrested him and the church, and they were persecuting the church. Amen. Herod was doing that, and they got Peter, and they put him in jail. And you all know how that night that angel appeared to him. The Bible says his angel came. They, they, guards everywhere. Uh, s- uh, sentinels everywhere. And they don't, e- they don't even understand or know what's going on. And the angel touches Peter on, the, on his shoulder, and he said, he told him, he said, get up. Put your clothes on. Put your cloak on. And he said, and follow me. And Peter, look, it's like, I, am I dreaming? What's going on? I mean, is this real? I don't really understand, but all I know, all I know is what this. He followed him. Amen. Then the angel said, to, he told him, he said, put your clothes on, put your sandals on. Peter did so. He said, wrap your cloak around you. The angel told him, told him to follow him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that the angel, what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision until they passed through the first and second guard. Peter is walking through guards, armed guards, walking through. Angel, fi- wait on me. I'm coming. <laughs> He's following his angel. They passed through. Hallelujah. They came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself. Even the gate knew, I better open up. (laughs) Hallelujah. The gate opened and they went through. When they walked through the length of the city, the angel left. Then the Bible says, when Peter came to himself, (laughs) he was on the outside. I went to sleep in chains (laughs) and I woke up outside. Well, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. (laughs) That just goes to show you, you can lay down one way and get up another. Amen. Hallelujah. Peter woke up outside of the prison, outside of jail. Hallelujah. You need to understand, listen, it can be just like that. I don't care what they tell you. The door could be closed. Next thing you know, it's open. All you know is this. They told you you didn't qualify for the job. Now all of a sudden, the job is yours. Hallelujah. They told you you can't get in. And now all of a sudden, you're sitting at the desk and wondering, I don't know how I got here. I'm not going to do a lot of talking. Hallelujah. I'm just going to keep my head low and do my work. I'm just in the, I'm, I'm, I'm up on the top floor in the corner office. I'm just going to stay right here until somebody tell me to leave. I can't really tell y'all how I got here. All I know is I got a call one day and they said, come on up. I went on up. Hallelujah. They told me, they told me to sign the paper. Now I'm making the money. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to boast. I'm not going to make, I'm not going to act a fool. I'm just going to enjoy what God has done for me. Somebody say access granted. 
Hallelujah. Listen, he's given his angels charge concerning us. Put your angels to work. Give your angels an assignment. Now, I'm gonna, we're going to end with this last story, this last one, this last story about angelic activity, heaven coming to the earth to fulfill God's plan. This is the story. I'm going to start this story of Abraham and Lot. Now, you all remember in Genesis chapter 18, Abraham is visited by three heavenly beings, correct? In the form of men. Yes, Pastor Regina, there were three angels. No, there were not. There were two angels. And God Almighty himself. Amen? Two angels. And then the other, the other being was God in the form of man. Hallelujah. We all know what happened because at the beginning, the Bible says, in 18, it says, the Lord appeared to Abraham in memory as he said, sitting at his tent door in the heat of the day. He lifted his eyes, he looked, and he beheld, he beheld three men that were standing by him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them, and he bowed himself to the ground and said, My Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass me back. Now, it seems like there are three there, but like it's as if, amen, welcome back, welcome back. I pray the broadcast, the message was a blessing to you. It just really blessed us here in the house. You know, just to be reminded that God is so mindful of his children, amen, that he did not send his son that we remain bound and in bondage. The Bible teaches us that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So you are indeed free today, amen? So receive that in Jesus' name. Remember, the doorpost has shifted. You have the angels of God on your side. Give your angels an assignment, amen? Give them an assignment in Jesus' name. Remember, if you need us, we are here for you. Give us a call at 501 773 1400. For those of you who have already called, you've given us names, we are standing in prayer with you and we're thanking you for taking out the time to be with us. Be blessed. We'll see you next week at the Master's Seat. Thank you for joining our program at the Master's Feet with Pastor Regina Moore. Soul Gathering Ministries is located at 7600 South University Avenue in Little Rock, Arkansas. For more information, call 501-773-1400 or go to soulgatheringministries.org. You may also email us at soulgatheringministries at yahoo.com. Join us next week for another inspiring word from Pastor Regina Moore.